a huge fan of throwback inspired design. When I first saw the 8 Bit Do's new retro mechanical keyboards, I was instantly in love. On top of its shameless yet effective nostalgia play, the keyboard includes a pair of comically oversized customizable buttons. If there's one thing I love nearly as much as nostalgia, it's novelty. But does the retro keyboard live up to all of my expectations? Yeah, actually it does. It's a good keyboard. There are two versions of this beautiful thing. The N edition, which borrows its styling from the US Nintendo Entertainment System, and the FAMI edition, which resembles the Japanese Famicom. I was sent the N edition for the review, although personally, I much prefer the look of the FAMI edition, but I'm not complaining. The N has the same dull grays, black and red of the NES with a red LED power light and a faux grille on the top strip. Ah, look at the attention to detail. On the far upper left is the three position mode switch where you select from Bluetooth, off or 2.4G modes. Next to that is the volume knob that works in Windows followed by a pairing button, a fast key mapping button and a profile changing button. Down at the bottom, next to the rightmost alt key is a B and an A key. Those can be programmed however you like. This is a 10 keyless keyboard, so if you do have a lot of accounting to do or whatever else you use a numpad for, you're out of luck here. Not a big loss though. On the backside are 3.5 millimeter jacks labeled A, B, X, and Y for hooking up the 8-bit do super buttons. I really like how 8-Bit Do lets you hook up as many as four of them because I love how silly these things are while also being really useful. I mapped Control C and Control V to the B and A buttons because those are two key combinations I tend to use a lot. Programming the super buttons doesn't require software either. You just push the fast key mapping button on the top, the one with the, the star, until it blinks and then you hold down the keys you want to program and give one of the big candy red buttons a bop. Also on the back is the USB-C port for charging, updating the firmware, or using the 8-bit do retro keyboard in wired mode rather than wireless. 8-bit do promises over 200 hours of battery life on a single charge of its 2000 milliamp hour internal battery. So despite testing it pretty thoroughly, I'm gonna have to take them at their word. Flipping the keyboard over reveals the 2.4G USB receiver dongle hiding away with a clever little magnetic catch. It snaps into place when you put it back in a very satisfying way almost like a MagSafe connector on a Mac. The underside of the keyboard, like the rest of it, is hard plastic. I would have liked to have seen at least some metal here, but the plastic chassis is sturdy and it feels like it will withstand a lot of abuse. And the keyboard plate itself is made of aluminum. So structurally, it feels extremely sound. There's no flexing or bending at all. And the keyboard is heavier than I was originally expecting, weighing in at a fraction over a kilogram. That's over two pounds in freedom units. The letter symbols and numbers are die sublimated, which means they're printed on the keys with lasers, which rules, and they're resistant to fading or wear. The super buttons also have a rubber base that keeps them from sliding around, and they too feel very good to smack. It all feels very rugged, which is great because I tend to treat keyboards with the utmost disrespect. The keys are Kale Box White Switches V2 with a nice click to them that's noticeable, but not too aggressive. Travel is nice, but stops just short of my personal preferences. Key height is perfect for me. And just like everything else, all the pieces here feel sturdy and ready to be abused. The 8-Bit Do Retro Keyboard also has a hot swappable PCB. So if you want to customize your keys, the sky's the limit. You can go crazy. The configuration software is pretty lean, but I'm fine with that. I don't need a thousand different options for a keyboard that excites me mostly because of how it looks. Adding macros to any keys you like is a snap, as well as setting up different profiles, which you cycle through on the profile key on top of the keyboard. I don't actually use macros for gaming. I know, but I definitely use them for work, especially if I'm doing something like data entry. So I love me a good macro that contains a word or phrase I can just paste into any place I need it again and again and again and again and again and again. I'm happy to say the 8-Bit Do Retro Keyboard served me quite well during my time with the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Beta. 
It actually feels better than my aging Logitech G413 Carbon. And coming from years of using a wired keyboard, I've enjoyed the, the liberty, the freedom of a wireless one that feels just as good to use in games. I'm happy to say the many defeats I had were due to my own ineptitude and not equipment failure. The 8-Bit Do Retro Mechanical Keyboard's biggest selling point is its nostalgia play. And I gotta say, I would have been fine with that and that alone thanks to the awesome and lovingly detailed Nintendo slash Famicom color scheme options. But I was pleasantly surprised to find this is actually a rugged, well-built gaming keyboard that feels as good as it looks. The life of the internal rechargeable battery is long enough that it's a non-issue. The choice of Bluetooth, wired, or 2.4G is great, and it just feels really nice to use these Kale Box White V2 keys. Giant buttons are more than a novelty. They're easy to program, macro functionality lets me use my favorite productivity shortcuts, and they're just fun to smack every once in a while. Beyond that, its software is mostly no frills, but that's precisely what a keyboard built to resemble 1980s hardware should be. For more retro hardware reviews, make sure to check out our review of the Analog Pocket, also by me. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN. Mm -hmm.